All right, frustrating um, day all the way around. I don't have any great words of wisdom or anything. Um, you'll watch that, and I think if you watched it, it pretty much sums it up. Um, we got off to an extremely poor start defensively. Uh, they scored on, their, I think, their opening five drives of the game. Um, and we settled down and did some things better, but um, we've got to be ready to go defensively, and, I, and we weren't. Um, we didn't get any pressure on the quarterback all day. Um, he stood back there. They were able to, to run the ball efficiently on us. The run totals were just okay, but they ran the ball efficiently. Um, and offensively, here, here's the deal. Like, we, we played, uh, we did some good things offensively, but we do things to beat ourselves over and over again. Drops, you know, how many we have? Probably seven, yeah, seven drops. Um, and, and I was thinking eight, but I'll trust you seven. You probably tracked them better than I did. Um, the turnovers, and some of the turnovers happen because we have missed assignments, and then missed opportunities in the red zone. And to me, the 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 game came down. It was twenty one points. The game comes down to turnovers and missed opportunities in the red zone. You know, we had three trips in the red zone. I think we, we went for it on all fourth downs. And we lose by 21, and we leave 21 points out there. Um, credit to Texas Tech. Um, Matt had his guys. They, they were ready to go. But we've got to be better. I mean, period, period. Period. You know, it's – we got to, you know, I'll take our fair share of, uh, as coaches – but we got to make plays when it's when it's time to make plays, and um, we just didn't do it. We didn't do that today. Um, thought we had some good individual performances, um, but at the end of the day, that's not good enough. It's not good enough. So I'll take questions. Neil, defensively, you guys were good last week. Mm -hmm. Can you explain one week to the next? Well, um, they came out and, and clearly had had a good plan. They tempoed us. I didn't think we handled our, the tempo very well at all. Um, I didn't think we played with the same sense of urgency up front. Um, you know, we're, we're limited in the secondary as far as bodies. Um, some of those guys are beat up. But that, here's the deal. That's, that's all excuse. They made plays. And, and a lot of those plays were one-on-one. -on -one. Whether it was 28 running through tackles or them blocking us up front, I knew their O-line was good. They blocked us. They blocked us. And um, we had multiple opportunities to make some plays in secondary. We didn't make those plays. Um, and I thought schematically they had us. They had us on a couple things when we were playing in that three safety look, um, and they did a nice job, just like we had them schematically, you know, on their three safety looks. And and you know that's why we threw the ball for however many yards we did. But were you worried at all this week in practice? Did you get a sense that maybe some guys had sort of left it mentally in, in Waco? Yeah, I don't know if they left it mentally. I'm worried every week. To be honest with you, Alex. Okay, you've watched us play every game. You've been to every game, right? So I'm worried every week, all right? Um, at the same time, we we don't have very many guys, so we, don't, we can't practice very long, okay? And we didn't have – this wasn't a deal where the guys checked out and they didn't practice all week. We had decent practices. I wouldn't say they're great, but they weren't poor. You know, this isn't one of those deals where you come back and you look at practice and all, you know, going into the deal you know you're going to play poor. That wasn't it. Um you know, it, it that wasn't it. Now, was I worried how we were going to bounce back? Absolutely, because you know, I think fragile is the right is the word that I use with our staff. Um, I think it's fragile. I think part of that's because you're playing so many young people, and and they're getting sometimes exposed, and sometimes things aren't going their way, and it's the first time in front of a a big stage that's ever happened. You know, moving into the decision to make the switch at quarterback when you did, just because it, it, he's got four games, we just need one. I wanted to get him reps. I wanted him to get him reps. And um, I thought he did some good things. Same, same things that, that played Jared are the same things that, that played Austin. As we dropped the ball, all right, we didn't do a great job in protection. Um, I'll say this. I wish quarterback was our problem. I, I wish quarterback was our problem because that's an easy fix. Also, first time getting a look at, at Mathis. And I thought Mathis did some good things. You know, um, 
you got to be careful not to get too carried away just because who they had in the game. But I thought in, in how they were playing us that time, um, he was eager. You know, he had a hard time keeping his feet. I think that just some of that is just because he was so eager and anxious. Uh, but I, he ran the ball like he did in practice, which is hard and physical. You know, he's tough, makes decisions. Uh, I was pleased with how he performed in the fourth quarter. I think he played most of the fourth. Hey, Neil, um, don't see Flea Flicker called that close to the red zone. Um, I'm just curious what you thought you had there and what you saw in the play. Yeah, fishing. And here's what they did. We, we were in great position. Okay, we didn't do a very good job. You can go back out and watch it. We didn't do a very good job. We had a guy for the edge pressure. For whatever reason, he turned his eyes inside. Um, but they had everybody down. So you want to run the flea flicker when they have everybody down. And uh, we had everybody down. Um, guy came free. We got to do a better job leading him. Um, was it a good play call? No, because it didn't work. Um, but at the same time, I think that was like, I don't know, Mike, what number was that down in the red zone? I think we were over our last two or three, right? And so just fishing for some plays. That's something we've been carrying for a while. Um, that's the thought process. How do you coach your quarterback when the offense is struggling around? We talk about the, the drop passes. We talk about being flush out of the pocket, having pressure consistently. Mm -hmm. The stadium gets a little rustless. How do you coach the quarterback through mentally and not be something like, hey, you've got to focus and you got to get through this? Like, what do you do with yeah. the quarterback? I think I think that's a, a great point is you know I think the mental piece is so important you know it, it really is and at quarterback you only can control what you can control and that's a really tough deal all right and and quarterbacks are always given too much credit always given too much blame and they've got to be able to drown everything out and, and it's got to be a one play at a time and I know it's cliche but it is that's what it is at quarterback regardless of what the previous play is you got to clear your mind 100% focus on the next play. You can't control a drop ball. You can't control if we ran the ball on first down, now it's second and 11. You can't control those things, okay? If somebody that you thought was picked up comes scotch-free, you can't control it, all right? You got to have blind trust at quarterback. And that's what we talk about. We use that term, blind trust. So blind trust, every time I drop back, I'm going to be protected unless it's a guy coming free that I know about. Blind trust that I'm going to throw the ball and I have 100% trust that they're going to catch the ball because you can't play. If you do, you're tentative. You know, if you're sitting there worrying about everybody else, you're tentative. I think that's what happened last week in the first half and didn't play very well then. I know you weren't real happy with the defensive performance, but what did you think of the Duffy kid today? Well, I mean, he made a bunch of plays on us. You know, he's active. Thought they, he got the ball out of his hand fast. I think the story of the game is O-line for them. Excuse me. They did a – you know, they protected – they protected – Duffy had time. Um, and then they did a nice job in the run game. You know, that running back, they have the O-line, and you all heard me say this on Tuesday, I thought they were one of the top three in our league. Uh, they, I thought they proved that today. They blocked us better than anybody else in our league has, um, um, maybe outside of Oklahoma. But they blocked us really well. I think the running back does a good job of getting vertical. They broke a lot of tackles. You know, we've missed a bunch of tackles this year too. I mean, that's been, that's been a repeated occurrence. You know, Austin's hand was wrapped. Uh, it, it's yeah, the same deal. On the way through, he seemed to overthrow some guys, underthrow. Yeah, you know he really didn't. He really didn't overthrow. He had the one where he threw it out of bounds. The touchdown. We had a the I think the first drive, second half. We just straight up made. Like he really didn't overthrow. That ball was thrown for to to Ali Jennings, and he would have caught it. We had another guy that ran the wrong route and got got in the way. Um, but he really he underthrew some of them. He underthrew some of them. It's the same – that's the same – the reason it's wrapped, it's the same when he was in the hospital the week before um, – the week of Texas game. I'm sorry, not the week before, but the week of the Texas game. It's the same – the same deal. It's been – it's been. I think it's been wrapped in every game, I believe. Coach, when you're in these situations, in these times, I mean, mm -hmm. what are the best things you can take away from that? Yeah, I don't know if there's anything positive you take away from that, to be honest with you. Um I'll, I'll find some before I, I meet with the team on Monday. Um, but some guys had some some individual performances. You know, Sam James went for 220, you know, and he probably had four drops. So you, you're talking about a 300-yard receiving effort, you know, and that that's a, that's a good thing. I thought our defense uh, really challenged them, really challenged them and the coaches at halftime. And I thought um, our defense, they can give up a field goal in the second half. That was it. And offensively, we moved the ball almost. I mean, we punted, we punted twice. Ran 79 plays, punted twice, 
But 20 to 20. We didn't do a very good job inside the 20. And like I said, I think to me, it, we did not play very good defensively. But if we score in the red zone, which you got to do in this league, that's the difference. If you get into a scoring match, that's the difference. They scored in the red zone, touchdowns, we didn't. 21 point difference, that's it. Okay, one more question. Coach, no, no, no. He's a stud. Yeah, he's all in all the time. Um, works hard, he's productive. Um, you know, one of our most invested guys. Love the kid, love what he represents. Um, you know, he, he, he's played his best football this year, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I want to leave this in closing, okay? And y'all make sure you include this, all right? And, um, and, th and this, is, this is really for our fans, okay? Is I appreciate them being here. They were here for our man trip at 9.30 in the morning and it was in the, in the upper 20s, low 30s. They were supportive, all right? They were here through the bad first half. They were here through the second half. And a high percentage of them stayed. And I appreciate that, and that absolutely does not go unnoticed, okay? And we're not playing very well as a football team right now, okay? And we, we've got a ton of work to do in this program, all right? But I'll tell you, and this is, this is probably going to be is, 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 um, on our, one of our worst days, but I'll tell you right now is we will build a successful program here. And, and it doesn't look like it right now, but because of them – all right, and for them, we will we will be successful here. We will be, absolutely be successful here. And there's some growth pains right now, and it is. It is what it is. Nobody, I promise you, nobody is more frustrated with anything that's going on in the football field than me. I can promise you that. All right, but we have a high percentage of guys that are going to be back, and not only going to be back for one year, but they're going to be back for three years. And they will significantly get better. We'll do a better job coaching them. And there will be a product on the field that will match the fans that we have. 